Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. And if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Hill Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me for today's podcast, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here today to talk a little Carolina football, talk a little bowl scenarios for the 2020 Tar Heels, where they could potentially end up. Obviously, Carolina coming off a big win down at Miami in the regular season finale, 62-26, to 26, a, a blowout victory, which if you haven't seen yet, go check out our three things video we did after that game. You can probably find that by clicking our uh, the link to our channel down below. But AJ, let's dive right into it as we always do. That win, let's, let's hit on the Orange Bowl first. I know that's been a lot of, uh, it's been a big topic of discussion over the past few weeks in particular with kind of how the ACC's played out and especially with Carolina beating Miami. That situation is Clemson, Notre Dame meeting in the meeting in the ACC championship game. I think in order for Carolina to ultimately have a really good shot of getting to the Orange Bowl, they're going to need Notre Dame um, to lose to Clemson. They're going to need Clemson to beat Notre Dame and have that series even at one and one on the season. If that happens, you see both of them teams probably go into the college football final four, whatever you want to call it. And that probably gives Carolina a better shot of ultimately breaching the Orange Bowl. AJ, from your understanding, obviously that Miami win gives Carolina a lot better shot at getting there. There's still some stuff out of their favor, but how do you see that playing out? And, and do you think it's a case of if Clemson does beat Notre Dame, it's pretty likely Carolina is going to end up going to the Orange Bowl? Do you kind of see it playing out like that? that that's probably what will happen. Mm-hmm. Unless Clemson beats Notre Dame, the way Carolina beat Miami like a drum. <laughs> yeah, then maybe not. <laughs> they, no, seriously, because yeah. Notre Dame, it took two overtimes at home to beat Clemson, and Clemson didn't have Lawrence and Skowski yeah. and a bunch of guys. And, you know, let's. Th- what if Ohio State beats Northwestern by 50 points? And there's a lot of pressure exactly. to not penalize a team just because its conference made a decision that it was against. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I get the whole six games shouldn't be – that's not fair. They shouldn't get in over some team that plays more games. I can get – I can saddle up to that argument. Yeah, for sure. But Ohio State was very public about disagreeing with what the Big Ten was doing. Hmm. And then they kind of – at the end, they okay, well, we're, we're, we're going to go along with this because you got to go along with the party line eventually. Yeah. Least, college sports are very political. Oh, absolutely. We, we've, seen, we've seen that this year. And I'm not talking about – the messaging come from teams and stuff like that. I'm talking about how all this will they or won't they play that mm-hmm. revealed that quite clearly. So if Ohio state beats the snot out of Northwestern, which I think could happen. <laughs> and, and I think it's, I, I think, think it's it will happen. likely. <laughs> and, and remember they did beat Indiana and they put a ton of points on the number seven team in the country. Yep. Indiana doesn't sound like the number seven team in the country. But if you watch them play, yeah, they good. are. Mm-hmm. Really good team this year. One of the best stories in college football. Mm-hmm. And Ohio State has that win on its resume. And let's say Clemson just annihilates Notre Dame. There are a lot of people out there that have been waiting for Notre Dame to be exposed. Now, those aren't my words. I think Notre Dame's really good. I think this is a different Notre Dame team. Mm-hmm. We saw it in person against Carolina. We saw what they did to that offense. Oh, yeah. What that offense did two weeks later yep. to Miami on the road, top 10 team. Mm-hmm. Athletes everywhere on defense, and Carolina made them look slow. Yeah, I know. Notre Dame's really good. But if Lawrence and Skowski and all those dudes, if they beat them by four or five touchdowns, maybe it's Alabama, Clemson, mm-hmm. Ohio State, and someone else slides in there. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not Notre Dame. I do think in the end, if Clemson wins, Notre Dame gets in as well. I think that's probably what happens. Yeah, I think but, I would agree. But the whole point of this is scenarios in which that doesn't happen. Now, if Notre Dame beats Clemson, then Clemson goes to the Orange Bowl. And mm-hmm. I think the odds are better that Notre Dame beats Clemson again than that Clemson routes Notre Dame mm-hmm. and somehow knocks them out. Mm-hmm. So I think the uh, I think the ACC is either going to have just Notre Dame in or both in. That's ultimately what I think will be what happens. So yeah. as it pertains to Carolina, getting both in is what Carolina wants. I mean, the Tar Heels said after the game the other day, the root of Clemson. Clemson fans. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Terrible. Go Tigers. <laughs> yeah, go Tigers. Hold that Tiger. You know, mm-hmm. Chasserat's going to have hold that uh, a Tiger rag play it through his head. Yeah. 
he didn't want to say he was going to watch the game, but he was like, I might watch it. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> yeah. he, he tried to say he wasn't, but he's, he's going to be watching that game. <laughs> you want to play in the Orange Bowl, and why not? It doesn't matter that when they run out of the tunnel, there'll be 12,000 people in the stands just like there were yeah. the other day. At, the, Bowl, yeah. at this point, the kids are not affected by stadium atmospheres at no, all. But no, no, I still think it's an issue in basketball. And that's mm-hmm. another topic for another day. But in football – I think one of the cool things about this year is you've kind of found out what teams are self-motivating. Exactly. Because of the atmospheres. And this one certainly mm-hmm. is. So if both go on, I think Carolina absolutely gets the orange bowl. Just if you look at the ACC protocol, they'll get the orange bowl. Now what happens if they don't? And I think that that's the interesting question, Jacob, because let's say Notre Dame does win and Clemson bounces back to the, bounces down to the orange bowl. Where does Carolina go? There's been an interesting conversation on our boards about, do you want the Gator Bowl, which historically has a much it's been one of the better second tier bowls? Oh yeah. Or do you want the or do you want the Cheese It Bowl, which is the same bowl as whatever it was called a few years ago when Carolina went down there and got rolled by Baylor, which by the way, Patrice Ray and Tamon Fox were on that trip. Yeah, a couple of guys, yeah. They end their college careers going back to Orlando and maybe exercising the same kind of demons that Chaz Surratt took care of the other day down in uh, Miami Gardens. Exactly, yeah. I think they would they would end up either Gator or cheese it. So there's three bowl scenarios for Carolina orange bowl, cheese it, which is in Orlando and Gator, which is in Jackson. Uh, the Gator, I think they would play an sec team. Carolina. ACC. Yeah. Gators sec. Yep. I think yeah. that would get people jazzed up a little bit more than anybody else. Another from another league and the mm-hmm. cheese, it would be versus the big 12, but it mm-hmm. could be Texas. Yeah. It could be the- Texas, which is interesting to say the well, least. How about Mac versus Texas? That would, I, know. That See, would- I think that would be awesome. You know, and, and we're not going to go to the Orange Bowl. I think that would yeah, be it would be unfortunate for something like that, that there would be no pre, you know, day before media stuff. When I went down there in Orlando before Baylor, mm-hmm. you know, the Art Bryles, Larry Fedora dynamic was something that was real. You know, <laughs> Bryles, Bryles came up through the high school ranks in Texas, and that's where Larry got his start and mm-hmm. it crossed paths. So that made for some interesting copy that we were able to put together. But mm-hmm. back versus Texas would be off the charts. It would be. It would be. Yeah. I, from what I've gathered too, it seems like those are the, you know, three likely destinations. And I do agree. I've just had this kind of vibe or this feeling all year that it's Notre Dame's year. I think they're a really, really good team. And, you know, last year, if this happens, Clemson, Notre Dame in the final, I'm probably leaning a little bit more towards Clemson, but just with how good Notre Dame's been this season and kind of what they're playing for, I could definitely see Notre Dame beating Clemson again. And that would be unfortunate for Carolina because I think Carolina is a program and, and the majority of the fan base would love to see them play in a big bowl like the Orange Bowl, first time since the 40s. But overall, I think looking at – regardless of what happens, Carolina is going to end up playing, in, uh, playing a good opponent coming from a good conference, playing in a good bowl game. So there's a lot of positives to take away. The way, mm-hmm. I know people don't want to hear us talk too much about this, but I think Notre Dame winning the ACC championship would be so bad for the league. It's the ultimate exclamation uh, point on 2020, is yeah, it not? We're on tobacco <laughs> road. We're on tobacco. It really will. We're on tobacco road, and a lot of folks around here would not be too thrilled with that. But, but for me personally, you know, look – I think it'd be really interesting if Notre Dame was able to do that, how it could maybe pull up a little bit closer to full-time inclusion in yeah. the league because they would look at this as a viable path to the CFP. And that's exactly. ultimately what their decision-making would be about mm-hmm. because whatever's the most viable path to the CFP is going to be ultimately what makes them more money. Exactly. And and there are, you know, deals can be rewritten there's a lot of things that can happen that can that could actually make Notre Dame as a full-time member of the ACC a reality. And I think them winning the ACC championship might be the kind of thing that helps make that become a reality at some point down the road. So it wouldn't be the worst thing to happen in the league, but I think on the surface, people are like, no way, no way. They're interlopers. They don't belong here. Mm-hmm. Well, they're in the ACC for everything else. Mm-hmm. The rest of their teams have ACC yeah. patches on their uniforms. When I, when I go cover a basketball game up there, there's a giant ACC logo on the basketball court. Mm-hmm. It's an ACC school. Mm-hmm. It's just its legendary football program hasn't been in the league until now. Yeah. So. Yeah, somebody would have told me this time last year that Notre Dame was going to be playing in the ACC championship game. I would have been like, what the, What kind of year are we about to get into? <laughs> We've had like, that it's year. just crazy. Yeah. That, that it's question just gets crazy. A thousand times. And, and, and as far as Carolina football goes, the expectations going into 2020 – 
a lot of people thought, hey, maybe they could get to the CFP. And a lot of people thought, well, they're just years away. There were a lot of doubters about Mac, or they didn't think an Orange Bowl was possible. I think there was hope. Yeah, I think it was. I think mm-hmm. a lot of fans had hope that they could be in this position in December. I don't think most people expected it. No. It's a real tight. Look, 25 months ago, a lot of people wrote stuff saying it's not going to work. It, it's not going to work. Old guys going back, you know, you, what was it, Thomas? Well, you can't go home again, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The litany of examples of guys that were, were really good at some place, left, and then went back and it didn't work. And I'm not tooting my own horn, but I did write when Mac was hired that if it's going to work, this is the guy. And we'll talk yeah, about that guy. in the podcast. But I think that that needs to be acknowledged in this podcast because two years in, I think two years removed from five wins in two seasons. And, and it was bad. At, yeah. They're looking at going to the Orange Bowl and they're not, they're not backing into the Orange Bowl. It's mm-hmm. not a, oh, well, someone has to go there kind of no, situation. They've earned that spot, They just yeah. robbed the number 10 team in the country on the road. Mm-hmm. They curb stomped them. Yeah, it wasn't even the a most game. Impressive, the most impressive performance I've seen from UNC football teams is I've been covering the program mm-hmm. in, in various capacities for 25 years. Not mm-hmm. even close. No, yeah. So so they're leaping into the Orange Bowl, and if they end up having to go to, a, to Jacksonville or Orlando, well, they're leaping into that situation too – so whoever they play, whether it's Texas A&M in, in Miami or whether it's Oklahoma State or Texas in Orlando or whether it's uh, name the team from the SEC mm-hmm. in Jacksonville, it's still a great opportunity for this program to beat another Power 5 program and continue the ascent. They use that to build. You finish 9-3 and three and your last two wins are a curb stomping at the number 10 team in the country and then a bowl win over a Power 5 from a good league. Mm-hmm. that's pretty good no matter no matter what happens that's a great way to close this thing up people put a ton of stock into romping temple last year in annapolis in a noon game in a wednesday afternoon <laughs> this is gonna mean a lot more it's oh, gonna yeah. show you the trajectory mm-hmm. absolutely especially when you, like you said when you consider where this program was you know just over two years ago i mean it's it's unbelievable what they've been able to do and the last thing i want to touch on before we wrap this one up got a couple other scenarios that Probably won't happen, but we'll go ahead and just throw them out there in case. Uh, you got the Military Bowl, Duke's Mayo Bowl, which is the one in Charlotte now, and the Outback Bowl. I guess those are potential destinations. I think it's a lot more likely that Carolina is either going to end up in the Orange Gator or Cheez-It Bowl just based on how they finish the year, especially with that big one yeah. over Miami. I think, you know, guys are pretty high on Carolina especially. So just touch on those bowls. Do you think those are likely destinations or are those pr- on pretty low on the scale of where they might end up? No, and what's interesting is, well, the ACC, the ACC's lost four bowls that have canceled out already with the Pinstripe, yeah, some, Pinstripe yeah. Sun, Fenway, and, and another one quickly. We've had a few I teams guess. opt out, yeah. Yeah, and then BC, Virginia, and Pitt decide they're not going to bother yeah. you playing. Mm-hmm. So, but that, none of that affects Carolina because the bowls that opted out weren't going to be options for Carolina. No. And the teams that have opted out weren't going to get selected over Carolina. Mm-hmm. So the pecking order is Notre Dame, Clemson, and then UNC, they're going to be in, and and travel doesn't affect things this year either because mm-hmm. no one's really going to be traveling to games and teams like Max said they're going to treat the bowl game like it's an actual road game. Mm-hmm. They're just going to fly in the day before, play the game, and go home. There's not going to be any events or anything like that. So it'll be interesting to see if that has any effect on anything. I don't think it really will. A lot of this stuff's kind of set in place. So yeah, uh, they're going to go to Florida and they're going to play either Miami, Jacksonville, or Orlando. It's pretty not a bad place to go in the middle of December or yeah. January, right? <laughs> Having just been down in Florida and it's everywhere. It was right like now. 80 degrees down there on it, Saturday, yeah. wasn't it? I liked it. I got my walk in. I got a good sweat. But otherwise, traveling right now is just a pain. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and yeah. For the teams, they travel different than, than us, people like me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, traveling kind of sucks right now, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Oh, I can imagine, people, yeah. And not many people tried. There were some people, there were Carolina fans on some of my flights going to and from, a lot of them families. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they'll just go down there, just treat it like a road game. Mm-hmm. But as far as the whatever Carolina can get out of the bowl appearance, obviously the orange would be the best mm-hmm. because of the national exposure. It's been 71 years since this program played in a major bowl game. That was two senior years. We've talked about that. lost to Rice in the Cotton Bowl. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think that would be the best scenario. Obviously, they can really use it a lot. I mean, if they're able to go to the Orange Bowl and win, 
man, that's some serious momentum. Serious. Yeah. But even if they end up going the Gator or the cheese at bowl and they pick up wins, they still go nine, three, they'll finish close to the top 10 in the rankings. And it's a good year. they will get a ton out of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, to me play, if they play a good team from another power five conference, that's all you really want to continue finding out where they are, mm-hmm. give them a chance to grow and, Give them a lot more momentum. That's what this is all about. And yeah. I do think this program will treat a bowl game as a must-win type game. Oh, a lot sure. of programs don't. And that's the other thing. A lot of programs don't. They, it's a reward or let's just go play the game. Hey, we're in a bowl. We get to put the patch on our jersey or put another mm-hmm. little banner up. No, this team, this program wants to finish 9-3. and three. Mm-hmm. They don't want to let up on their set. They mm-hmm. will approach that game the very same way they approached the military bowl last year. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. And I think – you, you, you get a lot more momentum, you know, it's a big win over Miami. I mean, you can't, regardless of what happens, you have to acknowledge how big that win is. But if Carolina goes and plays, you know, an SEC or big 10 team in the orange bowl, Gator bowl, cheese bowl, and loses by two touchdowns, all that, you know, a lot of that momentum from that Miami game kind of goes out the window and that feel good kind of feeling you had going into the off season is, isn't as, you You're don't right. feel as good about it anymore. You know, one of the so. things I, I love about, Hall of Fame coaches like Mac Brown is they fully recognize that when you have a performance like they did Saturday at Miami, mm-hmm. there's a responsibility to back that up again. Yeah. You don't just say, Hey, look at what we did. Take a snapshot and just stare at it for a while. Mm-hmm. There's a responsibility. Okay. What's next? Mm-hmm. This is okay. If you think, if you say this is who you are, well, do it again. Mm-hmm. And the bowl game will offer them that opportunity, whether it's Oklahoma state in Orlando whether it's, um, I don't know, Missouri and Jacksonville or whether it's Texas a and and Miami, they will have that opportunity. Yeah. So but to, right before we wrap it up, it you're very, you're, sounds like you're pretty sure that regardless, Carolina's playing in Florida. It's what it looks like is going to happen. I can't so, imagine a scenario. Yeah, I just that, don't know what else it would be. Unless, yeah. unless one of the bowls opt out. I mean, That's a good point. I'm not gonna, nothing is etched in stone right now. Yeah. Other than the fact that we're what two and a half weeks left of this year, mm-hmm. that's about the only thing that's a guarantee. You we know? think twenty twenty one is coming. <laughs> we're not one hundred percent sure, but <laughs> I don't see any meteorite. No meteorite coming yet. Yeah, I'll be waiting on the thirty first minute. I'll just be sitting in my watch, like, all right, what's going to happen to wrap, to end this year? <laughs> okay. the clock is ticking. Slowly. Exactly. Yeah. So regardless, I mean, Carolina's going to more than likely end up playing in a good bowl against a good opponent that I think is going to test them again. And if they can get a win in whatever bowl they end up playing in, it's going to be huge for the program moving forward. And, you know, and the Tar Heels the, have earned it. And the Tar Heels yeah. have earned it. Oh, yeah. It. They have. The, the way they – that big win over Miami, the way they were able to kind of end the season, I think being rewarded with a good team and a good bowl is probably what this team deserves. And then it's up to them to go out there and compete and, and ultimately win that game. So, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. But, you know, one thing's for sure, when we do know where Carolina is going for the bowl game, we'll have it reported over at Tar Heel Illustrated.com as soon as it happens. So we well, should we'll be locked Sunday. in. We'll, yeah. yeah. We'll know. So let me jump in here and interrupt you here. I know that's like, no, go ahead. Yeah. That's okay. I, I have carpet lots <laughs> to do that as much as I want. We'll know Sunday. For the yeah. ACC championship game Saturday, one on Sunday, and I'll be mm-hmm. back from Cleveland at some point early, late Sunday morning, I guess. So mm-hmm. we'll be ready to roll when all that stuff comes out. Yeah, we'll have that rolled out. So stay stay locked to TarHillIllustrated.com and our YouTube channel, Tar Hill Illustrated. But that's going to do it for this podcast. AJ, thanks for joining me and talking a little bit about UNC's potential bowl destinations. But as always, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to like it. Be sure to share it with your friends, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.